Hello viewers, welcome to this video lecture series on Computer Networks Theory course. Today's topic of discussion is on Open Shortest Path First Protocol. In short, it is called as OSPF. Open Shortest Path First is an intra-domain routing protocol like RIP, but it is based on the link state routing protocol. So this protocol is an intra-domain. Intra-domain here means within one autonomous system. Suppose you know that this internet, the entire internet cannot be managed by single administration it is divided into different systems called as autonomous systems so you may be having a one autonomous system one autonomous system two autonomous system three autonomous system four like this so in short i can tell as1 as2 as3 as4 like this okay so how this routing is carried out within one single autonomous system so if any protocol is carrying out the routing process for a single autonomous system or any routing protocol which is carrying out the routing process within one autonomous system we call that as an intra domain routing protocol if a routing protocol is also taking care of routing across two autonomous systems like in between as1 and as2 also if the packet has to be sent across these two autonomous systems if routing information has to be carried out we call that as inter-domain routing protocol so inter-domain routing protocol there is only one protocol existing border gateway protocol hope you are getting now the difference between inter-domain and intra-domain okay intra-domain is within one autonomous system how the routing takes place okay which protocol is used here in order to carry out the routing between all the routers in one single autonomous system so that type of routing is called or that type of uh, protocol is called as an intra-domain routing protocol and here in the first sentence i have mentioned it is mentioned here like like rip like rip like rip means rip is also intra-domain okay ospf is also intra-domain so you can say that intra-domain you are knowing these two protocols one is ospf and another is rip but it is based on link state routing so ospf protocol is based on link state routing link state routing algorithm whereas rip is based on distance vector routing algorithm so complete details on rip and distance vector routing is available on my channel in the same playlist now let us see in detail about ospf so in ospf the cost of reaching a destination from the host is calculated from the source router to the destination router so here you need to find out the cost of reaching a destination from the source this is your source host and here you have the destination okay this is your destination this destination host is present in this network n4 you can check here the source host is present in the network n1 and the destination host is present in the network N4. So here the OSPF needs to find out what is the cost from the source to the destination. So from the source to the destination you can check here you have these three routers R1, R2 and R3. If you are taking from, R, from R3 only the total cost to reach the destination from R3 is how much it is mentioned as 4 here. 4 is because the cost of this network is 4. Now how to compute the cost for the network? In OSPF, the cost for any network is based on the throughput. It is based on the round trip time or reliability or hop count. So all these 4 parameters can be considered here in order to compute the cost for a network. But whereas in RIP, if you have seen, we were only considering what the hop count. Right? But in OSPF, here the cost can be what it is based on the throughput round trip time reliability hop count so based on that the number is assigned here for the network n4 the cost mentioned is 4 here for the network n3 the cost mentioned is 3 for the network n2 it is mentioned as 5 for the network n1 it is mentioned as 4 so these are the costs that are mentioned so if the router r3 wants to reach the destination network the cost is how much 4 Whereas if the router R2 wants to reach the destination network, then it has to go via first network N3, which is having a cost of 3 and then it will reach the destination network, which is having a cost of 4. So 3 plus 4, 7. Next, if the router R1, okay, if it wants to reach the destination network, then first it has to go via this router R2, okay, to reach R2, 
the network cost is phi that is the link on this link what is the cost mentioned it is phi then from r2 to r3 it is 3 and from r3 to destination network the destination network is having a cost of 4 so 5 plus 3 plus 4 how much it is 12 this is what is the total cost so the same logic whatever i explained here i can show you here in the forwarding table so we are constructing here the forwarding table for r1 forwarding table for r2 and forwarding table for r3 what will be the entries in the table r1 r1 is what r1 is here let me just erase and you can check here r1 is here r1 is connected to network n1 n2 so that means whenever you are constructing the forwarding table first you need to write all the networks that are present in this scenario we have n1 n2 n3 n4 so all four entries we have made ready now for r1 you are constructing the table for r1 r1 if you check you it can reach network n1 here okay it is directly connected n2 is also directly connected that's why the next router you are writing it as dash dash whereas the cost to reach n1 is how much 4 the cost to reach n2 is how much 5 so that you have mentioned and whereas now this r1 if it has to reach the network n3 if it has to reach the network n3 okay this this network you can check here in between what this network cost is 5 and the destination network cost is 3 5 plus 3 8 but it has to go what via the router r2 that's why the next router value is r2 r1 if it has to reach n4 it has to go via r2 only and the cost will be how much you can check here it it is coming across this network n2 n3 and the destination network 5 plus 3 plus 4 so it is 12 and the next router is r2 here so this way you have constructed the table for r1 similarly you can construct the routing in a table for r2 r2 is here r2 is first you can fill easily entries that are connected to n2 and n3 so it is directly connected to n2 directly connected to n3 n2 and n3 dash dash you can write down n1 is this side fine the cost is 5 plus 4 9 and n4 is this side and this particular r2 to reach n4 the cost is 3 plus 4 7 next here if you check for r3 okay forwarding table for r3 r3 is here it is directly connected to n4 and n3 n3 and n4 so n3 and n4 next hop information will be dash 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 n3 you can reach at a cost of 3 and n4 at a cost of 4 what about r3 if it wants to reach n2 if it wants to reach n2 then it has to go via r2 so n2 via r2 and the total cost will be this n3 cost and n2 cost in between networks n3 and n2 5 plus 3 8 and if r3 wants to reach the network n1 definitely it has to go via r2 only so n1 via r2 the total cost will be 3 plus 5 plus 4 it is 12 here in this network scenario only three routers were given so you have shown the routing table or the forwarding table for r1 r2 and r3 each esp of router can create a forwarding table after finding the shortest path tree between itself and the destination so if you if a particular router wants to create the shortest path to reach all other networks like n1 n2 n3 n4 so what is the shortest path to reach n1 what is the shortest path to reach n2 what is the shortest path to reach n4 so it is trying to construct a forwarding table by writing all the values to reach the shortest path and to write the forwarding table it has to create the shortest path tree shortest path tree it can construct using the digit cross algorithm now what is shortest path tree or the least cost tree you can tell so this particular information how to construct the least cost tree i have explained in one of my previous lecture video session on link state routing you can check there ospf is based on link state routing so i have shown in one of my video how to construct the least cost tree or the shortest path tree by using the digit trust algorithm now next let us see how the ospf works so ospf as i said that within an autonomous system it is going to carry out the routing so within this autonomous system also this ospf further divides the autonomous system into areas here you can check in this diagram one example wherein area 1 area 2 okay 
that means from here to here is one area one autonomous system is divided here into areas area 1 and area 2 and you have here one more area called as area 0 area 0 is also called as the backbone area now what exactly is happening is first in area 1 also you have what the routers the networks and the host area 2 also you have what the routers the networks and the host so every area is having routers networks and host now in every area there is one special router identified and that router is called as area border router the job of the area border router is to route the information from one area to another area but it will always carry out using the backbone router area border router of area 1 it will summarize the information that is the routing information from area 1 and it will send that information to the backbone router backbone router via this van it will send that routing information to the area border router of area 2 now you got to know that what is the functionality of the area border router area border router it will be present in every area and we have the backbone routers present in the backbone area backbone area is always the area 0 and the other areas are numbered as area 1 area 2 area 3 like this the same points i have just written here uh, in rip if you compare this working with the routing information protocol which is normally used in small autonomous systems rip you might have checked that there you you are not going to divide the autonomous system into areas because you are going you are going to use that rip in small autonomous systems only but ospf was designed to be able to handle routing in a large autonomous system so if it is a large autonomous system then it is further dividing that large autonomous system into areas so you can say that this is another level of hierarchy in routing because the first level is the autonomous system and the second level is the area if you start from internet then internet is what the first level then comes what autonomous system then comes what the area so this is what is called as the hierarchy in routing these points i have already explained each router in an area needs to know the information about the link states not only in its areas but also in other areas so for this reason only one of the areas in the autonomous system is designated as the backbone area and it is responsible for gluing the areas together the routers in the backbone area are responsible for passing the information collected by each area to the other areas so in this way a router in an area can receive all the link state packets generated in other areas so for the purpose of communication each area has an area identification the area identification of the backbone area is zero so in this session i have shown you how the forwarding tables of ospf gets constructed and the functioning of the ospf hope you find this information useful please like share and subscribe to my channel thank you bye bye and take care